Hey friends, in this video, I'm gonna teach you how to use the new Outlook activity inside of Data Factory Pipelines in Microsoft Fabric. Let's get to it. Hello again, my name is Austin Leibel and I'm a trainer at Pragmatic Works on our Azure team. And I'm also really focusing in on this hot new topic, Microsoft Fabric, that has really been integrating Azure topics like Data Factory, Synapse Analytics, uh, real-time analytics, data science into the Power BI service. So I've gone through and I've done some different YouTube videos as well as one of our Learn with the Nerds sessions on Microsoft Fabric. And I've just been learning more and more about this and I'm really loving what I'm seeing. And if you're interested in learning more about it too, definitely subscribe to our YouTube channel as we're going to be delivering much more content over it on the next uh, 20, uh, 30, 40 months probably that uh, it's still going to be new and we're going to be learning things. And uh, we're also going to be having a boot camp about months in 2024 that if you want to really dive in and get some knowledge of how to use these different technologies, you can come learn with me or some of our other trainers at Pragmatic Works with some live four-day courses for scaling up your knowledge very quickly. All right. Well, inside of the Power BI service, I want to go through and I want to show you something that I found when using Data Factory pipelines inside of the Power BI service. So Data Factory has been a tool that's been out in the Azure portal inside of uh, you know, a couple, three or four or five years. But they've integrated a lot of that technologies with the, using things like pipelines and Power Query Editor as a part of this like Data Flows Gen 2 with Microsoft Fabric. So there is a ability to go through inside of a data factory pipeline and copy data from one source of data to another. In the example I did with my Learn with the Nerd session, I wanted to copy data from an on-premises SQL database or maybe some sort of cloud source SQL database, and I want to move that into my lake house. So I did that, and if you're interested in going and learning more about that, definitely check out that Learn with the Nerd session. Now, what if I want to make sure that once that copy activity runs, once I take that data from the source and I move it to the destination, that it runs successfully. And I want to have some sort of email set up that emails me after it does. Or maybe I want to know more importantly when it fails. I want to say, hey, when this fails, send me an email so I can start looking at it right away. That's what I'm going to show you how to use inside of the Data Factory Pipeline user interface. So I'm going to go over inside of my Microsoft uh, kind of portal. I'm going to go to the Data Factory category. I already have a pipeline that is up and ready for me to use inside of my Learn with the Nerds workspace. But if you wanted to create a new data pipeline for yourself here, you could do so using the data factory experience or potentially using the data engineering experience as well. So I'm going to go over inside of my load dim geo pipeline. This is again the same one I did as a part of that Learn with the Nerds live session that I did three or four months ago. So you can go back and find that if you're interested. But this is going to take data from the source. It's going to take it from a file in this instance, and it's going to load it into my lake house tables inside of my lake house. You want to know what a lake house is? Check out some more of our content around that. So it's going to be doing an activity. It's going to copy data from one source to a destination. But I want to continue to work with this. So I'm going to go over to my additional activities here in my activity ribbon, and I'm going to go over into the Office 365 Outlook activity. Now you have many different activities up here, and we'll probably do some different uh, videos on them over the next several months, years. So if you're interested in one of them, definitely let me know down in the chat what you're most interested in learning more about. Maybe I'll do one on the Teams uh, activity as well. But I'm going to click the Office 365. 365 activity and it's going to add a new activity to my pipeline canvas to my user interface here. Now you will notice that this is technically still in preview, but I've tested this. It works well. Uh, all you're going to need to be able to do is sign in and authenticate with your email address that you want to receive an email at if you want to test this. Technically, if you want to test this out, you have a fabric enabled workspace, you're either a trial or something that your organization is set up, you should be able to follow along without even having a copy data activity. But the way I want this to flow, I want to go through and configure the settings for my copy uh, data activity first and then, and I've already done that, and then I'm going to go through and configure the settings for my Office 365 Outlook activity. So that's what I need to do now. I already got my copy data set up. I need to go through and do this. Now the general settings on this 
this are going to just be like the name of it. What is this going to be doing? I'm gonna call this one my success email. So this is going to go through and send an email upon the successful run of this copy data activity. The only other thing I need to do is go and set up the settings. So I am going to have to log in. I'm gonna click the sign in button there. It's going to authenticate me. I'm gonna to have to use uh, like single sign on to pick from this list of available uh, accounts that I can sign on and allow access to this Fabric workspace here. So I'm gonna say, yes, I do want to do that. And then it's going to show me who is currently signed in and who is this going email going to be from, and then who do I want to send this to. Now for my demonstration, I'm just gonna be sending it back to me. I wanna send it right back to me so I can verify in my Outlook that it is actually run successfully. But you might want to send this to one or multiple users or groups of users inside of your Microsoft Entra ID directory. So I'm just going to copy out my signed in. I'm going to say a liable at pragmaticworks.com. If you got to ask me a question or anything like that, send me one and I'll respond. Uh, if you uh, respond, if you send me something to that email. Now, what I want to do now is go through and configure the subject. Now I have a couple of different things I could potentially use here. Number one, I could just type out a subject. Hey, your pipeline succeeded or something like that. And that might be great and all I really need. But I can also use what we call the dynamic content properties of the pipeline user interface here. And I'm going to open up something called the pipeline expression builder. So instead of just having this hard coded subject line with just information, it says, hey, it succeeded. Well, what pipeline succeeded? How do I know when it run? Maybe I want to actually get some of the information about the pipeline run and use it inside of this subject line or potentially the body as well. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to click on the box that appears or the text that appears below the box right here. The only thing you have to do to make sure that that actually pops up is click inside of the subject line and that will appear for you. So I'm going to add some dynamic content and on the right hand side of my screen, you can probably see it right over my head there. You're going to see the pipeline expression builder appear. And this is where I'm going to go through and configure some of the hard coded properties as well as maybe some of the more dynamic properties that I can use here. So how the pipeline expression builder is going to work is going to be its own kind of special language that's going to be able to be written. It's not necessarily SQL. It's not DAX. It's not anything like that. It does have a lot of similarities with Power Automate language and the uh, Logic Apps language as well. So you might see some uh, similar kind of use cases with that. But I'm going to come here and I'm going to start out with an at symbol and I'm going to say I want to do a concatenation. I'm going to concatenate really two or maybe three things potentially. I'm going to come in here and concatenate inside of my parentheses two different values. The first thing I want to do is I want to go through and I want to say what ran, what ran successfully. Well, for this pipeline, I could potentially point to the name. So what is the name of the pipeline? Well, it's load dim geo right there. Load dim geo is going to be the name of what I want to point to. So I can come over to not my parameters, but my system variables and point to my pipeline name right here. My pipeline name, can y'all see that? Perfect, I think you can. Pipeline name is going to show you exactly what goes in here. So all I have to do is click there, click pipeline name for myself, and that's going to give me whatever the name of that is. Now you'll notice here, it doesn't actually say the name of the pipeline. It doesn't say load dim geo, but it's going to use the dynamic properties of this expression builder for whenever this pipeline runs to use whatever the name is, whatever this metadata name is, it's going to use that there. So that's the one thing I want to concatenate. Maybe I want to add more to this. I want to add in a comma to add in my next statement, and I'm going to add in the string value ran successfully. I think I spelled successfully right there. Maybe not. We'll have to see. Uh, I think I did though. Uh, now, the other thing I might want to do is get like the run ID. Every single time a pipeline runs, it's going to have a unique ID that is generated to give you some more insights to what actually happened and going back and monitoring these things. So I'm going to put a forward slash and some spaces in there, and then I'm going to end that part of the concatenation. I want to do one more thing though and actually get the run ID. So I might actually 
come back in here and say, hey, run ID and put like a colon there and add a space after that. You can do some different things with this if you so choose. But I'm gonna put a comma at the end and after that final single tick there. So this is going to use the pipeline name, some hard-coded values. Hey, this pipeline load dim geo ran successfully. And then I want the run ID. And you can see here the run ID is going to be the pipeline ID here. The pipeline run ID is uh, right there. The pipeline ID, the name, all these different properties are configured and be able to point to the actual information of what is stored inside of my fabric workspace. But I want the run ID ultimately, so I'm gonna pick that from the option. And that's gonna be the end of my concatenated statement that's going to comprise my subject. So learning the pipeline expression builder has a lot of cool tips and tricks you can kind of go through and work with. Definitely stay tuned to our channel as we're going to have a lot more around this coming out very, very soon. Now we have this configured at the very bottom of my screen here. I will go ahead and say, okay, you might not see that. I'll kind of move out of the way a little bit. Hey, there it is right there. Okay. Now the next thing I'm going to do is I could potentially go through and have some metadata configuration, dynamic properties for this body, but just to simplify and speed this video up, I'm just going to put a hard coded message here saying your pipeline is awesome and put a couple of exclamation marks there. Super happy with my pipeline. It's working great. It's awesome. Now, this is going to be the success email setup. So that looks great so far. I want to go through now and also configure my failure. So you might be, okay, well, you got to go through and do all that again. Not so much. You have a way easier way to actually do this. I'm going to just click on the right click on the Outlook activity here and say I want to copy it out. You can use Control C as well. And then I'm just going to use my Control V on my keyboard to paste this. So it's going to have a lot of the configuration already set up again very easily, but there are a few things that are going to be different. Number one, I'm going to go back to my general and call this my failure email. Oh no, this failed. I want to go through and make sure I have something set up, whether it fails or succeeds to get an email either way. So I'm always up to date on what's happening with my copy data activity there. So I'm going to now go to the settings and reconfigure the subject because we no longer need this to say the pipeline ran successfully. We're going to have it say the pipeline failed. Okay. So that's going to be the name of the pipeline failed. And also it's still going to have the run ID there. It ran and it failed. What happened and what, where can I go back and look at that information? So we're going to reconfigure that for the failure email and say, okay, there, the pipeline is not awesome anymore if it fails. So we'll just say something sad, like your pipeline failed and maybe give a little frowny face there too. Mm, I'm sorry. So that looks good. Now we're not quite done yet. There is one more thing we need to make sure we can do. How do we go through and track on our workflow, which is what a pipeline helps us orchestrate. How do we make sure that the success email is sent or the failure email is sent? Well, we're going to use the dependency option from the copy data activity to create what I like to call a precedent constraint. Essentially, once this activity either fails or succeeds or completes, what's going to be the action we want to do after that? What's the next line in the workflow orchestration that we're doing? So for the copy data succeeds, I'm going to take this green check mark here and say upon the successful run of copy data, it's going to go through and use the success email. And I'm going to use the red X saying if this pipeline fails upon this uh, failure of this pipeline, it's going to send the failure email. And notice here how we have it set up. If it succeeds, it does one thing. If it fails, it does another thing. Kind of similar to almost like an if statement if you want to think of it that way. All right. Now the only thing left to do is go through and run this, test it out, and let's prove it works. So I'm going to go through. It's going to load some data again. We're not really worried about this. Just trying to simulate what this is going to be doing. If you didn't want this to run, if you're trying to follow along with me and you created both activities there, you could technically right click on the failure email and deactivate. This should run successfully. So you're going to have this run. If you don't want that to run, you click the activate there. But I'm going to click on the run ribbon up here in my top left corner and click on run and have this thing execute save and run it. Let's see what happens. Now, this should not take very long at all to run, but I'm going to pause the video for just a moment. You'll come back and you'll see me go through in about a minute or so after the copy data runs, whether it fails or succeeds. So I'll see you back here in just a second. All right, welcome back. So my copy data activity succeeded, which means I sent the success email to my Outlook that I had specified in that Outlook activity settings. 
I can see some of the metadata information here, but once you've gone through and configured this, you're not gonna wanna run this manually every time. So once this is scheduled and set up on some sort of time trigger, you're gonna wanna get email alerts when things fail or succeed. And maybe it's just the failures you have set up. Maybe you don't care if it succeeds, everything's working good, but if it fails, that's a problem. So this got me the succeed message here. Let's look and see. There's my email. There it is. The load dim geo ran successfully. Oops, I might want to put a space there. I might need to go back and reconfigure this. Again, we're just testing this out, right? Want to put a space here. All I'd have to do is go back to the success email, go back to this concatenated statement here with the uh, ran successful and put a literal string value of a space before ran. And the next time it runs, it would look better, right? So we have the success email. It gave us the message, it gave us the run ID, which you will notice here if I pull this over one more time and look at the uh, ID right here compared to what's in my email, that right there and that right there match up exactly. It went to Austin Libel from Austin Libel and it said, hey, your pipeline is awesome because it ran successfully. Yay. Awesome. So this works well. If you like this, definitely make sure you keep staying tuned to more Fabric content because we have so much coming up. There is so much that has been added to the Power BI service that you're going to be able to do if you want to orchestrate data, if you want to move data, if you want to clean data up. Maybe that's not been your role before, but you have the ability to do that now with some awesome new technological features that have been out for a while, but they're integrated and made much more easy to accomplish. So hopefully you've really enjoyed this one. I'm going to keep having great content coming out around data factory over the next couple weeks. It's ultimately going to be leading up to our Learn with the Nerds on data engineering that's going to be airing in December. If you're watching this and it's already way past December 2023, go back and check that out as well as it should be out already. Thank you so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one.